and Savior, Jesus Christ. T today is the second Sunday of Advent. Forerunners and messengers advance the advent of our God. While John the Baptist's voice the wilderness may be the principal focus of today, Malachi's prophecy can also easily herald the coming Christ as forerunner of the Lord of hosts. Finally, all the baptized are called to participate in sharing the gospel. In so doing, we prepare the way for the coming of Jesus, and assist all people in capturing a vision of the salvation of God. A few things have been asked to announce. First off, the Sunday School Christmas program practice will be held on Wednesday night, December 8th, from 6 to 7 15, and all students, nursery through high school, are to come. Confirmation kids are expected to be at practice and will not have confirmation class, so all the kids are to be here Wednesday night from 6 to 7 15. There's no Advent service tonight. I assume Pastor Kim Cassett since he's not here. And please keep the family of Richard Fritz in your prayers. He passed away on Monday and the funeral services are pending. The morning circle will be giving goody, plate, or goody plates of cookies, candy, etc. to shut ins and everything again this year. We would welcome extra help in baking. Anyone willing to help us out should bring their goodies to Good Hope at 9 a.m. on Tuesday morning, December 9th. Okay, is there anything else that they would like to announce? Anything else before we begin? Let us prepare for worship then with the brief order of confession and forgiveness found on page 56. Please stand. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the cross of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may love you and will remain by your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and leave us that we may be light in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a call and a minister of the Church of Christ by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Please be seated in service. We'll continue with the lighting of the Advent candle. Today is the second Sunday of Advent. Advent is a time of waiting. We wait for God to send divine love and light into our dark world. How does this happen? God's light comes through Jesus, who became a human being, just like you and me, so that he could show us the way back to God's divine love and light. Merciful God, give us grace to heed the warnings of the prophet and forsake our sins, so that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. A reading from the prophet Malachi. I, the Lord, all-powerful, will send my messenger to prepare the way for me. Then suddenly the Lord you are looking for will appear in his temple. 
The messenger you desire is coming with my promise, and he is on his way. We continue to wait for the coming of Jesus. Last Sunday, we began in the dark, then lit one candle. Today, on the second Sunday of Advent, we light two candles. Every week in Advent, we light another candle. Each candle that we light reminds us that the light of the world will soon come to us in the human form of baby Jesus. May the Lord is being prepared in our hearts. May every valley be filled, every mountain and hill be made low. May the crooked paths be made straight and the rough ways smooth. When our Lord comes, may all of us then see the salvation of God. Amen. Please stand and let us join the singing of our gathering hymn number 26, Prepare the Royal Highway. Thank you. Lord God, 
to prepare the way of your only Son, by his coming give to all the people of the world knowledge of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Second Sunday of Advent is taken from Malachi 3, beginning with the first verse. God announces a covenant with Israel, a messenger like Malachi, his name means my messenger, will prepare the way of the coming of the Lord by purifying and refining God's people as silver and gold are refined. <clears throat> See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight indeed is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like coals, salt, full of salt. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of salt, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver, until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. Here is the city. The psalm is Psalm Luke 1, beginning at the 68th verse. The congregation will respond with a dark and a horse. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has worked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David. And he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from the old that the, we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promise to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant. The oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we bring rescue from the hands of our enemies. Might serve him without fear. In holiness and righteousness. Before him all our days. And your child will be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord for his ways. To give knowledge of salvation to his people. By the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us. To give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. To guide our feet into the way of peace. The second reading is taken from Philippians 1, beginning with the third verse. The Apostle Paul is the pastor of many new churches. He writes in his letter about his joy to be a partnership with the Christians of Philippi. Listen to how tender hearted Paul sometimes a strong preacher is with his friends as he encourages them to grow in love and knowledge. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you. Because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now, I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring you to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you, because you hold me in your heart, for all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in my defense of confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the passion of Jesus Christ. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you determine what is best, so that in the day of Jesus Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest and righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ 
for the glory and praise of God. Here is the second reading. John the Baptist is a herald of Jesus whose way is prepared by the repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As we hear the careful record of human leaders, we sense the spectrum of political and religious authority that will be challenged by this, com by this coming Lord. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Luke, the third chapter. In the fifteenth year of the Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip ruler of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis, and Lysanias ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be clear, and every mountain hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God, the gospel of the Lord. Kind, you may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is present here with us. I sincerely doubt any of you would argue with me about that, or you will be here. Jesus is present here in this room, with us. Where two or more are gathered in his name, he promises to be with them. I think all of us here would agree with that. We also believe that we leave here, going to our lives, out into our lives, but he will also be with us. He'll go with us. All of our lives have heard that promise in those last words of Matthew. And lo, I'm with you always to the close of the age. In our heads, we know that Christ is with us. Or again, we won't be here. Worshiping. And we also believe that we come forward and receive the sacrament. The bread and the wine. That in a very special way, we take Jesus into us. That Jesus is truly present in, through, and under the bread and the wine of Holy Communion. This is my body. This is my blood. We confess that. And every time you say amen to that, you say, yes, I believe that. Christ is present. Here today, wherever we go, even within us, Christ is with us. However, no matter how loudly we confess it, how often we confess it, no matter how strongly we believe it up here, we as Christians often forget this truth. It doesn't always sink completely into our hearts. But there's times it's forgotten. Just think of some of the places and things that you've done in your life. But you have done them if you truly believe that Christ is present with you. If you knew he was seeing you do what you're doing. We forget, don't we? We forget. Advent is the time to remember. 
Advent is a time to remember that Christ came into the world 2,000 years ago. It's time to remember that Christ will be coming again at the end of the age. Last week's lessons talked about that, focused on that. But it's also a time to remember that Christ is present here and now. He is our companion who walks beside us. It is Christ's spirit that dwells in us. He is God's Son who dwells beyond us. Christ is present. That's one of the things that the Advent season is all about. Christ is present here and now. Now, we got John the Baptist today. What John had to do with this presence of Christ in the world today? Well, John is a very interesting character to say the least. An oddball. Somebody kind of a fanatic, probably people thought him a fanatic at the time when he lived. He lived out in the wilderness, out in the desert. Matthew tells us that he wore camel's hair and clothing, which was scratchy and itchy. Had one of those on his waist. And he ate locusts and wild honey. I know in children's sermon I used a number of times, I would buy um, dried grasshoppers. He was surprised how the kids would try on the Sunday when we talked about the locusts and the wild honey. But those details are important because they tell us who John the Baptist is, who he was for the people of Jesus' day. The last verses of the prophet Malachi in the Old Testament, the very last verses of the Old Testament, proclaim this prophecy. Lo, I will send the prophet Elijah before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of the parents to the children and the hearts of the children to the parents, that I will not come and strike the land with a curse. Because of that prophecy, the people in Jesus' day believed that Elijah would return before the Messiah came. Now Elijah and John the Baptist had a lot of things in common. Elijah lived in the wilderness. He lived on locusts and wild honey. He wore a, a, a clothing that made of camel's hair and a lot of velvet around his waist. That's why those details are important because the people of Jesus' day, when they saw John the Baptist coming, knew that it was the Elijah figure. I'm sure someone thought it was Elijah returning from the dead because Elijah was taken up in the whirlwind in the chariots of fire. But Elijah came. And John the Baptist came to prepare the people for Christ's return. For his coming into our world. He prepared them by warning them, telling them, the kingdom of God is near. God's rule, God's reign is coming. The Messiah is coming. So you better straighten up. And those who believed him did. He had a baptism, a water baptism that was a sign that they were willing to change their ways, which is what repentance is all about. Just turn around and head the other direction. That's what repent means. He came to warn them. To prepare them for Christ's presence in the world in a new way, a way that Christ had never been in the world before. And the people who believed him let that knowledge, that proclamation, change their lives. They, they changed. They repented. Today we celebrate this presence of the Lord among us. Because the presence of the Lord changes us. Changes how we think. How we feel. What we do. When we truly believe that Christ is present with us. 
we will be different people. I love how many of you had a Sunday school teacher like I had. I remember one of my Sunday school teachers, I'm sure, sure which one. I think it was Bill Ruth Bork Johnson, but I can't remember for sure. But if us kids were misbehaving, why like she stepped out of the room and we came back to us, and, you know, as kids were always, always, she'd say, Would you be doing that if you knew Christ was here today? Because Jesus is here seeing you. You know, it's pretty simple theology, but it's fairly true theology. When we believe in our hearts that Christ is present, we will live our lives differently. And that's what this day is all about. That's what John Baptist was all about. And that's the first message I want you to take home today. That Christ, is there anything in your life that you do differently if you truly believe that Christ is in your home, next to you, in your car, anywhere? Would you do things differently? Because if, if there is, this is the time to change. But there's also another message I have for you. You need to be John the Baptist for the world. John reminds the people of the presence of Christ, proclaim the presence of Christ, come into the one of God. And we need to do the same by the way we live our lives and by what we say and what we do. One of the times that I remember that I was a John the Baptist. Was in my first parish, I served on the fire rescue team. And I imagine the fire rescue people aren't much different here or anywhere else than they were down there in Johnston, Iowa. They were kind of a rough bunch of guys. Their language is not the best sometimes. Especially in excitement at times. But when I became the chaplain for them, they kind of changed things. You know, they weren't quite as quick to say some of the things they would have said if I hadn't been there. I was quite as quick to do some things they would have done if I was there. Quite as quick to drink as much as I, they might have drank if I wasn't there. You know? It was, I had a John the Baptist influence on them. I know sometimes when they, that person they would slip and say something they shouldn't, and they would say, oh, pastor, pardon my French. I'd say, you don't have to ask my pardon. You're not using my name in vain. And they usually, they got the message in a hurry. All of us are called to do the same thing. All of us are to be the righteous, holy people. The people know that because we don't use the Lord's name in vain, because we don't use profanities and obscenities, that we might be offended, even if we aren't. People need to think twice and be John the Baptist. Be the presence of Christ. Remind people of the presence of Christ in their lives. So today, this week, I encourage you to remember that Christ is with you always. Everywhere. Within you, around you, beyond you. And let that shape how you live. And also, by the way you live, remind others that Christ is already here in this world. His presence is in you. And let that change how others see you and see the world. Amen.
invite you to stand. Living together in the trust and hope, let us confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. And then seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated while receive the offering.
pray especially today for all in the nursing home, and we pray for Pastor Kim and Bess at this time of grief, and give them safe travel home. Grant them healing and holiness. Hear us, O God. Send prophets to speak difficult truths, even when they are poorly received. Better than those who ask hard questions and challenge accepted ways. Instill in youth and all of life a passion for pointing to Jesus in all things. Hear us, O God. We remember your saints, both those publicly celebrated and those more humbly remembered. Confident that your work will be completed, we live in faith until the day of your coming. Hear us, O God. God of your life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, may his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Lord, upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our standing hymn is number 35, Heartbreak Light Sound, number 35.